the thing, isn't it? I mean, we've predicated this discussion thus far on whether you can break through and convince the British people that you are a credible, coherent, serious political party. And frankly, your manifesto, well, with its lack of specificity on this particular issue of what you're going to cut, given the targets you've set yourself, doesn't leave you looking no, serious. No. Well, hang on a second. The election hasn't started. And I just said a moment ago, we need to provide a list of those departments that need to be slashed, of those quangos that need to be abolished. And is it a serious, credible message to say that the state sector is far too big in this country, that it needs to be cut radically, and that we need to give incentives to people in the private sector to create real jobs? I think that argument has got real Well, it, it's not serious if you say it, but in the next breath you say, by the way, NHS frontline services will be entirely ring-fenced. Yep. By the way, the armed forces are going to be increased by 25%. That's the one area. The 25%. One area. Well, border police as well. You're going to have to build more prisons because you want a lot more people up. And all of these different areas of public service, you're actually going to have to spend more. That's where you begin to look the not one area. serious. No, the one area, the one area where we say there need to be increases in the budget are defence. Uh, yes, within other budgets, you know, some parts will be cut radically, some will increase in a small way, but the big area of increase would be defence. Just a couple of other brief thoughts on, on your policies which go beyond pulling out of the European Union. Uh, one is climate change. You mm -hmm. seem to be absolutely convinced as a party that climate change isn't happening, despite no. the overwhelming consensus of scientists. Still, despite the doubts that have been raised about some of the particular data sets, still the scientific consensus says climate change is happening, it's man-made, and it's very serious. But your party refuses well, you to... you were asking that. me a moment ago where the money was going to come from uh, to pay for all of this, and, of course, we are wasting billions every year on climate change programs. Uh, so weather, cutting carbon emissions weather, is absolutely weather, not going to happen under any sort weather, of UKIP government. Whether cl climate change uh, or a rise in temperature, which is what people are really talking about, whether rise in temperature is happening uh, because of CO2 emissions, uh, we think is pretty doubtful. But what we're absolutely certain of are the billions that are being spent to tackle it simply won't work. And the best example of this is this, is this crazy project um, at a total cost of £100 billion, and some will come from the private sector, but most will come from taxpayer subsidy, this crazy idea that we need to build another 10,000 offshore wind so turbines. So vote UKIP. It does not work. Right, vote UKIP for fossil fuels forever. Vote UKIP to immediately take nearly 20% off your electricity bill, because that's the hidden subsidy that is now going to fund renewable projects that don't work, and vote UKIP to go into a serious program of building nuclear energy and recognizing... Well, you can't build nuclear because you can't afford to uh, subsidize the, the removal of all the toxic waste because you're cutting public spending by 30 or 40 percent. And recognize in the short term that coal may well be very oh, useful. Okay. Immigration. You've already yeah. mentioned it in this interview. You've tied it to your EU policy. Yeah. You say the country must not cannot and will not allow population to keep rising up to possibly 70 million by 2030 yeah. or near there. Uh, how are you going to stop that happening? I mean, the effective, I mean, you know, 70 million is almost an agreed figure now because we've been on this projection now for several years, certainly since 2000. How do you stop it? Uh, well, what you easily can stop um, is you can easily stop a net several hundred thousand people a year coming to settle in the United Kingdom. What we don't do anymore, we don't properly draw a distinction between people coming to work here and people coming to settle here. And the first thing that's got to be said is that it is, and we as a party said this in 2003 and 4, that if you open up your door to poor countries in Eastern Europe, it will lead directly to a massive migratory flow. It has led to that migratory flow. And what do you flow. say to those businesses who rely across the, the agriculture sector, food processing, building, many other sectors, who rely on a well, steady supply of cheap, hard-working labor from overseas? Well, you could, of course, um, operate a work permit scheme, which would be a very, very strict, that you come into the country with a work permit, and when that work permit's run out, you go back to where you came from. We don't do that at the moment. We allow you to come in, to work, to settle, to bring your family and all the rest of it. That's the first thing that, that I would say to those businesses. And the second thing, and this is tied into a domestic problem, is, you know, I talked earlier um, about getting people who were on benefit, off benefit, and back to work. Uh, you suddenly would find that a lot more British people would want to be going for those jobs because it would actually... You, you've, it would you've be slashed, worth their, if not removed, their benefits. Uh, no, I hadn't said that. I'd well, that's the implication. We've given it? them the incentive <laughs> to get to work by raising the level at which they start paying tax. All right. So the two work together. Uh, 
One message you in your constituency fight are, are delivering, and the party as a whole across the country, is this, that we are not politics as usual. We're different from the established parties, Labour, Lib Dems, Tories, in effect. They've all got the same problems. They're all locked into a system which we are going to challenge. How does that square with the record of UKIP, particularly in the European Parliament? Under your watch, for example, as leader of the party, two MEPs elected in the 04 class of MEPs were actually convicted well, one, of fraud. Yeah, one, you, one you can't blame me for at all, because before he even took his seat in the European Parliament, we discovered there was a serious problem. We hadn't found out about the problem. The police checks hadn't brought up the difficulties that he was in, and we got rid of him. Boom. God. Doesn't say much about your party that he was uh, an MEP candidate, successful, well, entered the parliament well, under your banner, and actually you discovered within weeks that he was a crook. Well, within days, actually. Um, within days of him being elected, we discovered. As I say, it doesn't say so, much about your party. Well, what can you do? You know, we did well, we're trying to establish we whether your party checks. is going to convince the public that it is a we different, did, cleaner sort of politics. We did the police checks on him, and nothing was revealed. Today, there is, an, there is a thing called the Enhanced Criminal Records Bureau check. Uh, it didn't exist then. Had we had that, we'd have found out. And yes, okay, let's just deal with this head on. Yes, we had one of our intake of 2004 who abused the system. And I would say to people, you know, in every walk of life, in every company you've worked in, often in every family, you'll find a bad apple. The question is how do you deal with it? And when I found out the extent of what this man had done, that he deliberately broken the rules, I got rid of him. You say, we've had one man who abused the system. Yep. You've also said in the past that uh, you have claimed in expenses and allowances from Brussels since 1999, ooh, you said, it must be pushing two million well, pounds. That's a, that's a direct misquote and a deliberate misquote. Well, it, it's a vast sum, yeah. you said, in a yeah. discussion with Dennis yeah. McShane. But, but I yeah. don't know how much. Oh, Lord, it must be pushing two million. That's yes, a direct well, quote. Yeah, but not money that's gone to me. That's the point. And well, that's we don't know where it's gone, do we? Because you've never, you've yes, never agreed to an independent yes, audit of it's all the gone money. to employees. And that was how do we know? That was where this was misquoted. How do we know? Oh, because, because how could I possibly have claimed that much in the course of well, ten years? we don't years? know because you've never we agreed get. to an independent audit of where that money's gone. Well, actually, if you, look at the, if, you, if you look at my website today, you will see the figures I've, I've got looked at your website today. Yeah, but, but, excuse me, we're talking about <laughs> a huge amount of money from 1999. I've yes. looked on your website. There is no accounting for that money, a truly extraordinary sum of money, and many people, even inside the party, frankly, believe you've abused the system. No. Nobody inside the party believes I've abused the system. Well, the only, people inside the, the party who person, have been thrown out, the since John person. West, for example, who was a leading, a leading no, 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 UKIP no. figure in Suffolk, no, not he really. believes you have been conning the party. Yeah, well, I'm afraid that's absolutely wrong. Listen, I have, since 1999, there is no other British MEP that has travelled the length and breadth of this country more consistently than I've done, that has, that has worked as hard as I have done. Nobody else in the old parliaments produced any figures at all. We are now producing those figures. They're up on my website. Over 85% of the EU money I get doesn't go to me, it goes to With the With the greatest respect, Mr. Farage, employees. I have spent an hour on your website this yeah. morning trying to find these figures. They're not there, or if they are there, they're hidden so far <coughs> into no, the not. website, they're unreachable. No, they're not. What I haven't published are are the figures I pay to individual employees, but you can see the total sum that was claimed last year for employees, the total allowances that came to me, the vast majority have not gone to me. The money goes to pay for employees. Uh, John West, John well, West Well, I'm sorry, said but he's this. not a credible, he is well, not you, a credible witness. We've been through... You didn't say that when he was a senior member of your party well, in, I, in actually, Suffolk, did actually, you? Actually, I did, and we've been through a series of court cases with this man. He is, he is a consistently litigious and difficult It is person. my view that Nigel Farage and many of the leadership of UKIP have been conning the public for years. Well, Their trumpeted no, Euroscepticism is no more than a cynical ploy designed to fool people into voting them back well, onto the EU well, grade. Well, one thing for certain, if I wanted to have the good life and make money, I would not be doing this job. I was earning more money when I was 21 years old than I'm earning being, a, be, be, being an MEP. I have not done this for the money. I have made a huge personal financial sacrifice to do this job. Now, okay, Before, it was, okay, it was my choice. But, you know, because you get some little ankle biter out in the regions who, who posts all this stuff on blogs does not mean that it is true. Let's, uh, and I before we not, finish, bring and, it back and, and, to no, 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 can I finish, please? No, I have, I've been there for ten years. People like this have every year 
complained about me to Olaf, the European Union's anti-fraud people, who've come in and been through my figures, and I have done absolutely nothing wrong with those monies at all.